Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. So today's episode is going to be about continuing to build the rocket. So as you remember from the last episode I got rocket fuel up and running down here and rocket engines being built as well. The next thing I worked on is the rocket control units that are being made in these um, in these assembly machines along here. So as you can see these take in uh, various electronics components and spit out the control units. Great. So one of the things I've, I've noticed with this game or with this mod pack rather is that each each succession each successive tier of um, of electronic circuits requires another type of material another type of component so here we go with the yellow ones the mark ones we take it we need to make these resistors that's, that's fine easy enough the mark twos the red ones take in resistors sure but they also take in the transistors that are coming in along this pink belt at quite a rate of knots the next one, the blue ones, take in, yes, the resistors and the transistors, but also the integrated circuits. So they're another step up in the complexity scale. And the purple ones, which I haven't actually started building yet, also, then also take in, where are they, also take in these CPUs. Now CPUs are getting to the point where things are starting to get quite complicated. Um, we're taking in the uh, this gilded copper wire, so it's copper made into copper wires and then coated in gold and then passed up here. And also the... Um, uh, what is it? Silica, silicon nitrate that's being made by this, um, these, these machines here. So we're bringing in silicon, crushing it, mixing it with nitrogen that comes from the air as usual, <clears throat> and then turning that into silicon nitrate powder, which goes into the into these circuits. The silicon wafers are coming all the way up from miles away down here somewhere. Yes, because this is a fairly complicated process. There's one, two, three, four, five, st five steps required to make the ingots, melt them turn them into these into these seeds, turn them into full-size crystals, and then slice them up into uh, into silicon wafers. So I didn't want to have to do all of that again further up, so I've pushed this belt through. And this is one of the things that I've kind of done, did a bit wrong earlier when I was designing this, and I, and I think I acknowledged it at the time, that it was a bad idea and I was probably going to regret it, is that I've built on both sides of the bus. And that means as I get more and more new things that I want to put on there, there isn't anywhere to put them. The bus is, is is already full, and that's a bit of a mistake, if I'm being quite honest. Because a lot of the things, like down here, for example, it would be quite useful to have. Maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll want to get the purple circuits in here, but there isn't really much space across here to bring them down. All the columns are taken up by something. What I have done up here is, as you can see, is I've combined the column that's taking the these fiberglass boards and the ferric chloride solution. So I'm, I've got both of those running up the same one. And that's because I'm starting to run out of space and trying to squeeze extra stuff in a bit as well. It's all a bit, it's all a bit dirty, and I don't really like having to do it. But, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it seems to be required. The other sort of thing is that I didn't realise I was going to need the fiberglass boards again after I built up the blue circuits. So I thought, the, yes, these are going to be the substrates for the blue boards. Fine, I'll, I'll put them into, the, I'll make them here, put them into the blue assembly, blue board assembly machines here, and they can be passed up for the blue circuit board machines. But then it turns out I need those for the um, electronics, no, for the rocket control units as well. So they need to be fed around here. I, I put in this, this splitter to carry them over here, and that's why there's it's it's difficult to squeeze more stuff in. And I didn't want to have to have all of this system again further up to build to build them. So it's it's not as easy as it might be. But I've managed to get those. I've managed to squeeze them through there. It is all working now. It's going quite nicely. As you can see, these um, purple circuit board machines are running. Well, they're, they're running. They they are running. Sli they're producing slightly faster now than the um, than they're being used up. That was thanks to me having upgraded the copper belt to be a purple belt. So, so that's um that's why it's now able to keep up a little bit a little better. But there still aren't really enough because I'm going to need these as well to produce the purple electronics boards, and that's going to need lots and lots of them. So I'm going to need to make so two, three, four copies of that are going out over this way. But that's not a problem. I can do that. It's just copy and pasting and then faffing around with these um. With these pylons that are going to be in the way, so that the, yeah, that's going to be one of the next things I'll do is will be to put in the um, electro the purple electronics boards manufacturing in about here probably. So, the rocket control units are then being fed down this belt here, and they're coming out quite slowly because it's a slow process making them, and they're being fed into this station. Now, <laughs> once again, lack of for for proper planning and so on. I've got this station and this station on the same line, and this is a this train is one that just shuttles backwards and forwards endlessly because I haven't because because of the, because it's doing three different products, it's not practical to have it working off the LTN like everything else would be, and so that means it 
it shuttles back and forth all the time every so often it runs out of fuel and i get annoyed with it um but more importantly when the train comes to pick up these rocket control units there's a 50 percent chance it's going to get stuck here behind this one and probably block these rails as well and it's all a little bit annoying but uh, at the moment there's i'm not going to do anything about that for now i'm just going to just going to put up with it i think so those um, rocket control units being piped down here to the rocket control unit drop I'm also making heat shield tiles and that's happening up here um, at this this area which is um, up with my uh, tungsten processing so for the uh, for the heat heat shield tiles it turns out you need the um, tungsten tungsten oxide I think it was that comes out of these machines now I haven't put a belt in here so what I've done instead is I've split off this pellet production so as well as going up to feed these machines it comes down here to feed these they then combine it with uh, carbon in a, in a furnace and that makes tungsten carbide that gets fed around here and then we've got the ni ni uh, nitrogen no we've got the silicon nitrite again, nitrate again and that's getting pumped around on the other side of this belt and we're making that into heat, heat shield tiles these are coming through a little well, they're, they're taking a while to make because it's a slow process. In fact, a lot of these are slow processes, so it's um, I, I may need to come in and double this at some point. But at the moment, it's it's working well enough for my for my current needs. They're coming through at a fairly slow trickle, yes. Uh, but and then they're being fed up to a station up here, where we're uh, storing them in the in the chest as usual. And we've got about almost a thousand of them there. So again, that's going okay. Um, I did send in a couple of trains manually, which you can is quite easy to do. You just find one of your trains in a depot, and you can tell it to go to a station to pick stuff up, and then tell it to go to another station to pick different stuff up. What's going on there? Why are those trains stopped? Why are you trying to get into that? Oh, my depots are full. Okay, that's um, <clears throat> that's a problem. How am I going to fix that? I think I'll come back and fix that later, but. That's interesting. I didn't realise I had too many trains. <laughs> he says there's another one pulls up outside. Oh dear, this is gonna, that's just going to get worse and worse. Anyway, looking back over here, yes, where things are going well. <laughs> so we've been dropping off the uh, rocket control units here and the heat, sh heat shield tiles here. As you can see, they've then come up these belts. They're getting. Um, we're running a bit low on the rocket control units, but oh well, Celebi. They're then being fed around here to the rocket, and they're being pulled in by these three arms. So we've got the um, we've got here we've got the, the fuel and the rocket engines coming down this belt. We've got the control units and the heat shield tiles from the station, and we've got the low density structures, and they're all being loaded in by these three arms. And as you can see, we've now actually built a rocket. That's why it's now sticking up out of the out of the ground here. It's ready to go, except that we haven't got a satellite for it yet. That's um, a bit of a pain, but we're going to have to make make one of them as well. So that's what this machine here is to for. Now, I don't know if you remember, let's have a look at the satellites. They require control units, which I've got, low density structures, which I've got, rocket fuel, which I've got, so we've got, we can load those in. Those are all, all loaded into the assembly machine. But we also need to make radar 5, silver zinc battery, and radio thermoelectric generators. Now, the radar 5 is going to be relatively straightforward. The, it doesn't take too many new things. It takes radar 4, which, which is all things we've got. However, we do also then need um, nitinol, nitinol? probably nitinol I guess because uh, there's only one T in it so I'm going to start calling it nitinol so we need nitinol which is made from nickel and titanium now that's a little bit awkward because uh, nickel is being made on the, 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 the this thing over here which is backed up and generally sucking so we're probably not going to do anything we, this, this has just caused so many problems over the time I've been since I built it, that I think I'm just going to completely ignore it from now on, and and yeah, try not to worry about it too much, and try and gradually move everything over onto this system here because this this actually works much much better. We've got all the the um, we've got the inputs. They're much less reliant on each other on each other working at the right speed. So I think it's probably going to be much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to put nickel production and probably titanium production on the bottom of here. Now let's have a look. So tit titanium is being made here, but it's ground to a halt because there's no rubite crystals coming through, and that's ground to a halt. Yeah, because as usual, because the nitric wastewater is full. Um. Oh, because we've run out of sulfuric acid. That's weird. That's a weird thing to be a problem because sulfuric acid is usually something I have far too much of. Um, 
that comes in here. But there's none in these tanks. Where, where is it? There's an, that's weird. There's no train set to come here, but there's a yellow light that means it thinks there's a train it's supposed to be coming here. Uh, that's very weird. I don't know what's going on there and why that's failed. Um, so, <laughs> uh, to shorten things up a bit, let's just move. Let's solve this problem. Let's move the titanium production up here. We can then pull out the um, titanium plates that we need for the titanium plates that we need for lots of construction. We can pull out titanium ore, which I think we need for one of the catalysts, and then we can have another station for titanium ingots as well. So we can um, turn. Or actually, we don't even need a station for that. We'll just pipe them in over here, and we'll turn them into the uh, nitanol and feed that up to another station over here. So there's there's plenty of room for that sort of thing. Although I am going to need some more land down here. So let's um let's have a think about. Let's put some of that down, and that can be running while we're talking about everything else. I don't know how much of this I want to make in one go. Um, let's go for about that much. So put that there. Let's give the bot something to do at least. Oh, I should make sure. Okay, no good. I'm not past the wall because I don't. I don't want to create an accidental back way into the base for the uh, biters. So I do that. There we go. That'll give the. Um, let's line that up nicely, and nice and neatly. There we go. So that'll give the um, give us a bit more space to play with. Oh, I'm going to need it for the these bits of these belts as well there we go um, is any of that in the okay we've got outside outside our bot catchment areas let's um, extend that as well I don't know if I should be doing this on camera but it's something I thought of so well why not it makes it makes a bit of a change from me just talking about stuff so one of the things I've discovered between episodes is that the um, Roboports have a range is one square more than the distance. Oh, I've got that in the wrong. I've got that in the wrong place. No, I haven't. I was going to say the distance between roboports is is one square more than the distance between um, two sets of these big uh, pylons. So the best way to do this is to put the pylons out first and then run out of space like this. But uh, that's is that covered? Is that going to be covered rather? No, not quite. Okay, I do need another one. Oh, let's just put it there. Uh, so what I was saying is that the distance between two, the maximum distance between two robo ports is one square more than the maximum distance between uh, three pylons essentially. So if you go in and put the robo ports out at their maximum distance and then try and put the pylons between them, it it doesn't quite work. You end up with um, needing an extra one every so often. So for these sort of areas where I've, I've planned this out a bit better, they're all two pylons apart instead of one roboport apart. And so that works quite nicely. Oh, and there's a gap across there. That's mildly infuriating. Uh, that's because the oh this that's because this one's in the wrong place because of the railway line. Oh well, never mind. Right. So what I'm going to do is uh, use this extra space I've, I've built here to produce the. Um, the nickel and the titanium in order to make the nitanol and that's going to be spat out here we can bring that over we we'll, could try and put it on the bus i think what i'll probably do is have a station up here oh, that's a bit dirty <clears throat> i don't know um because i'm going to need it for making advanced more advanced radars and radar production is happening down here so this is also a bit of a mess i might i might just rebuild all of this to be honest this is this is ugly I don't like the way these belts are snaking around all over the place. I've not planned things properly. It's a mess. If what I've done up here with the belts, now apart from the fact that it crosses over the railway lines here and I haven't left quite enough space at the bottom here for these bits, this is quite nice. This I feel I've done reasonably well. So I've got I've got them the, the nicely lined up and then the pro sub products that are needed for those go coming out above them. I could probably do that with the um, the radars as well. So I have the, have the radar building machine and then have the the cogs for it and then the steel cogs so these two are, are, are spot on this is exactly how I should do it perhaps we're passing through a green crate as well then this one this was a bit worse this this machine should have been in line with these two and then that would have been about okay and I'd have, I don't know what I'd have done with the belts probably some sort of funny business but hopefully that have made, been able to make something that would work um, and then for numbers four and five three four and five no four and five in the same way I'd quite like to do the same with trains as well, but to be honest, the Mark III trains are 
doing pretty well for me at the moment, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to leave those. That I'm going to try and fit in in this gap here, <coughs> maybe with some stations possibly off this one, possibly on the other side. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. So that's going to be reasonably manageable, I think. The, uh, the Radar 5s, okay, I'm not too scared of those. The These ones, <clears throat> I'm going to need... Sodium cobaltates? I, I don't know. I'm going to need to explore these and work out how to make how to make all of these obscure things. Plutonium, that's going to be fun. I don't know how to make uranium or plutonium or americium. Oh, th out of thorium, apparently. Okay. I'm going to need to start playing with nuclear stuff, it turns out. Um, which is going to be an adventure, shall we say? <laughs> oh, this is the equivalent of the coving in, uh, co Coverex or enrichment process from vanilla, I see. Um, yeah, so this is going to be fun. Um, plutonium and for the silver zinc batteries, silver oxide. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll, I'll get the, um, the nitinol and the and what and the whatnot stuff up and running first, and we'll 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 see from there. Okay, I think that covers the main things, the big things I've done since the, um, since the previous episode. Um, I haven't needed to go in and, and boost up the plastic production. Although, let's have a look at that while we're talking about it. Eighty-five thousand is reasonable. We'll we'll keep an eye on that. We may need to boost that from. Um, from the hydrogen production that's going on down here. This is the waste hydrogen that's coming out. No, it's not waste hydrogen. It waste hydrogen that's being turned into methanol, so I could massively extend this bit and then put some plastic creation in somewhere, maybe up here, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so that is another consideration. Other than that, well, I think that's... Well, I think that's more than enough, to be quite honest. There's <laughs> enough stuff talked about there to keep you quite busy for a while. So, we've got the rocket control units. We've got the heat shields. We now need to make purple electronics boards. We need to make um, radar fives. And then we need to have a jolly good think about nuclear stuff. I might do nuclear power as well, if that seems easy. Um, and then we'll go from there. I have to say, it feels like I'm getting quite close to actually getting my rocket out. It's probably only going to be another, maybe, three episodes, perhaps, to get that going. Um, and my goal with Angel Bob's, at least part way through when I was starting to get a bit frustrated with it, was I'll get as far as launching the rocket and then I'll see how it's going. But there's a lot of research... That's not research. This is research. There's a lot of research left and a lot of things in here that I could start working on and trying to produce. And that might be quite interesting. Um... The other thing I've got installed is the um, SpaceX mod, which has a lot of extra stuff working all the way up to eventually having faster than light propulsion, which takes uh, two million <laughs> science to, 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 to do, um, and is sort of my, my almost my end goal. Uh, basically, my end goal is to do all of the research and see how that goes. Um, there's a lot of the alien science pack ones, like these, all, these, all this military stuff that takes in um, the various alien science packs. And the orange ones as well, a gold one or whatever they're called as well. Um, so that's going to be an adventure. And I'd like to get some of the more advanced. I'd like to get the Iron Man suit just because it's an Iron Man suit. And it's probably going to be extremely useful to have a grid. How big is the grid, does it say? Equipment grid is 16 by 16. So it's not stupidly big, but it's probably going to be quite... But it's big enough to be use, very, very useful. Lots and lots of... Um, exoskeletons and probably maybe a couple of um, generators and some plasma turrets so there's lots of potential in there we'll see how that goes though um, yeah I guess I just need to work through some of these researches and see how I can get on um, I could nearly I could probably oh no no there's a lot of a lot of um, module research left to be done before I can start doing these there's a lot of stuff left to do. <laughs> oh, I remember the other thing I was going to talk about. So, um, the interesting thing about these is they're actually running at the, uh, the the maximum number of inputs you could possibly have with this sort of construction machine. So these um, these assembly machines, because they're two by two instead of three by three, like the full size assembly machines that there aren't any of within view, it means you can only fit four inserters around them if you have them in a line like this at least. And that means because you need one of those inserters to be taking things out of the assembly machine, 
you can only have three belts worth of stuff being put into the machine and that means you're limited to six six inputs which this is is on if it was any more than that then i'd have to have some sort of grid system where i put i don't know one like that one like uh that and then another one over here somewhere so you could then have a pair of belts between those a pair of belts between those like that and then you'd be loading in off all of these and then also with longer ones as well and the same on the other side and the bottom Oops. so at that point you'd be able to get in um, 14 um, different inputs because two of them will be required but this belt will be required for the output so you can't get the full 16 um, and I'm getting and the interesting thing is I'm getting to the point where that might actually be um, required uh, with the science because if we look over here at the science um, machines we've got these now these are three by three so you've got uh, room for six inserters around them which means uh, six belts and therefore 12 science packs being fed into them but at the moment I've got seven normal ones there's the biological things as well um, there's gold science which I haven't done yet because that's mostly for weaponry advanced we advanced alien weaponry and I'm okay, sort of okay with guns at the moment and then there's at least three or four um, alien research flavors Let's see if we can find something that takes everything maybe something like this okay okay there's three on that one we've got purple green and a sort of reddish here we go yeah this one takes this one takes seven different alien research packs plus the gold one so that's seven more on top of what I've got here there isn't going to be room I am actually going to have to do the uh, the 2d grid thing with my um, science machines if I want to have all of those alternatively I have another one of these that just takes in the alien uh, and the gold research packs that might be a better idea and just have more more research labs I think that's probably what I'll do because otherwise it's just, it's just gonna get a bit big and unwieldy it's already a bit of a shame that I can't do module research in the um, in the same ones because although that would have then mean, meant another another three things going down these but down these uh, belts which would have made it a bit more crowded okay I'm starting to ramble a bit now so I think that's a good sign that it's a, a good um, sign that it's time to end the episode um, Thank you for watching. In the next episode, as I said, I'll be doing the um, the purple purple um, circuit boards and having a look into what's required for the other things for the satellite. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. Um, I hope you'll join me for that, and I hope you're enjoying the uh, enjoying the episode. If the, if you have any questions about things I've been doing, or you'd um, like to see any more more details, anything like that, just let me know. I'm um, always happy to respond to some uh, respond to comments and things, and I hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.